Hey students, welcome to round six of the Mimic Social Simulation. Here in round six, we will be creating our last round of paid social posts. And before we jump in, I wanna make a quick note that if you've been following along in previous videos, I am using a different class this week to record this video. So the results will be a little bit different than they have been in previous rounds. The reason I decided to select a different class this week is because this class has more posts. So we've got a little bit more data to analyze and understand what we have done well at and where we should be making some improvements. So let's go ahead and jump right in to looking at our previous rounds. Because I want to look at rounds four and five together, I want to click on my post history and I'll click on Facebook to start analyzing each platform individually. First thing I want to do here is to increase my column options. So this way I have more information to review as I'm analyzing my posts. I'm also going to sort based on revenue from highest to lowest. The hope is that I have generated a higher level of revenue with my paid posts than I have with my organic posts. So in our Facebook platform, I've got one post from round four. I have a second post from round four. And I have to scroll down a little bit. And I have a third post from round four. So what do I notice? First thing I notice is that Facebook is not a high revenue generating platform for me. My post that performed the best only generated $960 in revenue, which is not much compared to all of my other platforms. I also notice that I have several organic posts that generated the same or more revenue than one of my paid posts. So for me overall, Facebook is not a high performer. I did not create any posts in Facebook in round five, and I am also not going to create any posts for Facebook in round six. So let's click on Twitter. In Twitter, I only made one paid post in round four. My post in round four was not a high revenue generating post either. So I did not make any posts in round five for Twitter. And I think that was a good strategy because my other platforms generated much more than only $720 in revenue. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my budget from Twitter and apply it to a different platform in round six. So quick recap, I will not make posts on Facebook or Twitter in round six, just because they were not high performers. So let's look at Instagram. For Instagram, I only have one post from round four but this post did generate over $10,000 in revenue for me. So I didn't make any posts in round five on Instagram because I was trying to see how some of my posts would perform on other platforms, but I think Instagram generating over $10,000 in revenue was higher than some of my other platforms in round five. So I'm gonna keep that in mind and keep going in my platforms. So let's look at Pinterest. Okay, here on Pinterest, yes. So my highest performing post was from round four and only generated a little over six, or generated $6,640 in revenue. So while this is good compared to Facebook and Twitter, my post from Instagram actually created a higher level of revenue. So while I will probably still use Pinterest in round six, I wanna make sure I'm allocating enough budget to Instagram so that way it has the ability to perform well. 
In Pinterest, I have posts from round four. I have three posts from round four here and one post from round five. So my post from round four, my top performing post, I wanna see what is the difference in my top performing post from round four compared to my one and only top performing post here from round five. So I can see that I'm using a slightly different audience. I am using a female gender. I am using an age range here in round four of 21 to 38. I expanded that to 22 to 44 in round five. There's a chance that I extended my audience range or my age range a little bit too far. So in round six, I wanna go back to my original age range of 21 to 38 to see was that a better age range for me. The other thing I can see is the interests that I selected from round four are different from the interests that I selected in round five. From looking at my interests, I can tell that there's a good chance my audience on Pinterest is not interested in outdoor activities. So I've got boats, boating, uh, outdoors, nature, hiking. So I've got a little bit more of an outdoor feel for my interests in round five compared to round four. So I think in round six, I will also go back to my original Pinterest audience that was focused more on fashion, trends, family fitness, art, humor, and so on. If I look at my media and my post on Pinterest, I'm asking a question in both, which is good. However, my post from round four doesn't have quite the same outdoor vibe as my post from round five, especially in the visual. Let's go over to YouTube. YouTube has been my top performing platform in terms of revenue for both rounds four and five. In round five, I created one post which generated over $104,000 in revenue alone. So let's look at potentially why was this post so successful. Uh, I use the exact same audiences for both rounds four and five. So there's not any difference at all in my audience. There's no difference in my call to action, my objective. I actually spent less in my daily ad spend in the post that performed better, uh, $107 per day compared to $155 per day. So I have to ask myself then if my audience is the same, call to action objectives are the same, daily ad spend is actually lower, why did this post generate more revenue? And my thought for that is that in Round five, I offered a specific percentage off. So enjoy 25% off all backpacks this week only. Whereas in round four, I just mentioned visiting a webs our website and purchasing a new bag for you and your furry friend. So because the major difference here is the percentage off, I'm going to run a post in round six that also offers a percentage off to see was this one of the keys that helped me generate over $104,000 in revenue? You can also see that my posts and my, or I'm sorry, my media and my posts match in terms of content. So my media has an individual with a dog in a backpack and my post talks about taking your furry friend with you. Same thing actually in round four, another individual with a dog in a backpack. And here we've got, we all love a good pet video, uh, purchase a new bag for you and your furry friend. So the fact that these match, I think is boding well and in my favor of generating higher levels of revenue. So let's look at our last platform. Let's look at TikTok. On TikTok, we just have one post per round. 
So I have one post in round four, one row post in round five. My post from round four generated higher levels of revenue. So a little over $32,000 compared to a little over $17,000. I do have a few differences. I am focused on a female audience for both rounds. My age range is a little bit more narrow from round four than round five. So potentially individuals maybe between 27 and 35 aren't as interested in videos on TikTok as I had hoped. So I think in round six, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to a younger age range. I did use the exact same interests for each, uh, each round, use the same call to action, same reach uh, objective there, and I did have a higher ad spend for round four compared to round five, generating higher levels of revenue. So I may try to give a high level of daily ad spend to my TikTok video in hopes that it will generate high levels of revenue. If we come look at our post and our media as well, I think there's a good chance that my caption and my media resonated better with this younger audience because we're just talking about a testimonial on a new bag as compared to traveling. Because on TikTok, I do have a younger audience with lower income levels, there's a chance that travel secrets just didn't resonate with this audience because they don't have the funds to travel. They may not enjoy seeing videos of traveling. So I think for round six, I will also go back to more of a younger feel in my uh, media and post. Okay, before we create our paid social posts, I have a couple of reminders for you guys for round six. Number one, Make sure you do not have any spelling, punctuation, or grammar errors in your posts. If you have any of these errors, you will be ranked lower than your classmates that do not have any of these errors. So the algorithm in Stukent does take into account spelling, punctuation, and grammar. So please just double check, make sure that all of yours is correct before you hit run simulation. Second reminder is to make sure your visual matches your caption. You want to make sure that whatever is in the visual, for example, in YouTube, I had a person with a backpack and a dog in that backpack. In the caption, I also mentioned having your furry friend with you. I mentioned having a backpack. So you could see the correlation between the media and the caption. My third reminder or recommendation for you here in round six is to use visuals that have the product in action rather than just the product image. So what I mean by that is, let's just look at some visuals here real quick. So if I were to type in tote, here I've got six tote visuals. And I've got two with individuals or the totes in use compared to four visuals with just the tote by itself. If you use the tote in use, you're likely to receive higher results, hopefully higher revenue than just by using the product image by itself. Your audience likes to be able to see themselves or likes to see the product in use when they are uh, scrolling through their social media. One more reminder for you is that I recommend in round six, because this is our last paid social posts round, focus on your platforms that are the highest performers. You do not need to create posts for all six platforms to do well. So just focus on the platforms that are performing the best for you and generate um, or give them additional daily spend. So hopefully you can reach a wider audience that way rather than trying to use all of your platforms. 
And then finally, not a, a reminder, but just um, a note that this week is Thanksgiving and Black Friday. So by using Thanksgiving or Black Friday in your posts, you're also going to resonate with your audience a little bit better. Okay, so we are ready to jump in and start making our posts for round six. For round six, I'm going to make a total of four posts, one on Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and TikTok. So let's start out with Instagram. Because my post from round four did well, my objective was conversions. I'm gonna go ahead and select conversions again. And if you remember, the one piece that I noted in Instagram is that I also had a percentage off sales. So I'll use that again here in round six. So my post, my headline is Black Friday sale. My post text is Black Friday is upon us. Save up to 30% off all products store wide. The media I will select is Black Friday. And I'm going to select the one that has the store wide sale because I mentioned store wide sale in my text. So I'll scroll down, I'll select my caption or my call to action, sorry, as shop now. And I'm going to give a daily budget of $160. The audience that I select, I'll use a saved audience. So this was my Instagram audience from a previous round. My interests here, hunting, camping, hiking, outdoors, family, fashion. So this is focused more on an outdoor audience. Let me come back up to look at my results one more time really quickly here for Instagram. I think for this round, I'm going to actually increase these interests just a little bit. So I'm going to edit this saved audience and add a few new interests. Okay, so I've added just a few more interests. And I think I'm actually going to go ahead and increase my audience age range as well because I am focused on a Black Friday sale. Uh, I'm going to increase my audience up to the age of 48 to hit more of the Instagram audience. So I'm going to rename this to round six Instagram. And I will schedule my post. The second post I'm going to schedule is for TikTok. So on TikTok, I'm going to focus on the reach in awareness objective. This has done well for me in previous rounds. So my post text is, have you heard why Abigail loves her buoy bag? Watch her testimonial and follow for more videos. The media I will select is ready or not, here I come. So we're looking at a testimonial from a college student on buoy. My call to action will be to watch the video. My daily ad spend for this will be, let's do $200 a day. The audience I will use is TikTok. And if we go back to the results quickly, we said we were going to go back to a narrower audience on TikTok. So we saw that the age range of 18 to 27 performed better. So we'll just change our age range back to 18 to 27 instead of up to 35. We will go ahead and keep our interests exactly the same. 
I'm going to edit my audience age to 27. I'm going to rename this to round six TikTok and schedule. Okay, my next post will be on YouTube and I'm gonna select conversions as my objective. That has done well for me in the past. My headline is buoy beach bags. And my text is very straightforward this time. Take 25% off all bags and then take your new bag to the beach. So I'm going to take my bag to the beach here. So I'm going to select the beach gear visual. So we can see that we are purchasing a new bag and then taking that bag to the beach with us. My call to action will be to shop now. For YouTube, I'm going to give a higher daily budget. I'm going to allow $265 per day. I'm going to look at my previous YouTube audience. And let's look at my results one more time really quickly. I used the same gender, age, and interests. This time, I'm going to add a few additional interests. I'll save this audience as round six YouTube. And I will go ahead and schedule my post. I've got $565 left and I'm going to make one post on Pinterest. I'll select conversions as my objective. My headline is yoga is greater than Turkey. And my text is take 30% off all tote bags with our Black Friday sale. These totes are perfect for post Turkey yoga. So my visual will be the big bag. So this is a tote bag for people who like yoga. My call to action will be shop now. And my daily budget, unfortunately, I only have $29.70 left. I'm going to look at my saved audiences of Pinterest. And I will select my Pinterest audience rather than my pin one for this round. All right, I've actually got a budget of $7.10 remaining. So I'm going to edit my Pinterest post. And instead of $29.70, we'll make that $30.70. So now I only have 10 cents remaining. Pretty good job using most of that budget. So in total, as a quick reminder, we've got four posts, one for Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Pinterest. Let's go ahead and hit run simulation. And see what happens. Okay, let's go to post history and we'll start with Instagram. Let's scroll down. We'll increase our column options again, just giving us more information. And my revenue for round six was much higher than my revenue from round four. So that is a good sign. I think increasing that age range and also increasing my interests was helpful. I also did allocate 50 additional dollars to the daily ad spend. So that was a good decision. Let's go over to Pinterest. 
Okay, unfortunately, Pinterest did not perform as well this week. This could be that I gave a lower daily ad spend than in previous weeks. It could have also been that I used Black Friday in my wording, but I didn't have any sort of Black Friday visual. So that might have been slightly confusing for the audience. YouTube has always been my highest performer. Doesn't look like we did so well this week. All right, this week we made $67,920 on YouTube, which was better than round four, but worse than round five. And lastly, let's look at TikTok. TikTok, I only generated $22,360 this week. I went back with my original audience from round four. My caption and my visual match, so not quite sure what happened there. Okay, so overall, some better and some worse from round six. I wish all of you luck in round six, and I will see you guys back here in round seven.